Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Kara Wada, a board certified allergy, immunology, lifestyle medicine physician, certified life coach. I have been helping people navigate complex immune system conditions like allergies, asthma, autoimmunity, and mast cell disorders for over 14 years. And as someone who lives with Sjogren's disease and dysautonomia myself, I deeply understand the frustration of feeling unheard or dismissed by the healthcare system. Today, we are tackling a sensitive topic, but one that's incredibly important and I think is really going to pull back the curtain on understanding why mast cell activation syndrome or MCAS can be so challenging to get diagnosed and managed, especially within the traditional insurance-based allergy practices. Have you ever felt dismissed when you brought up a concern about a mast cell issue or MCAS? You wondered why it's so hard to get a clear answer? Well, the short story is it is complicated. Today, we're gonna pull back the curtain and really explore why that is. We're gonna start by talking about the reality of reimbursement and following the money. Let me start with a reality check about our current healthcare system. In an insurance-based model, the focus tends to often lean towards conditions with a very clear diagnostic test result, standardized treatment, and a predictable amount of reimbursement. In part, when we look at how reimbursement has changed over time, it has actually decreased significantly in relationship to inflation and the cost of our staff, our overhead, the supplies we need, especially as allergy immunology docs. So we have to continue to see more people to order more in-office testing, to generate more revenue per amount of time in order to essentially get paid the same amount or the equivalent that we were five or 10 years ago. In a traditional allergy practice, those conditions that are going to be much easier to see, to get patients through the system and to generate that revenue are going to be classic allergies, asthma, food allergy, straightforward care, They fit nicely into a system and nicely into checkboxes and algorithms, right? MCAS, not so much. Diagnosing and managing mast cell activation requires extensive time listening to your story, piecing together the complex systems across those multiple body systems, understanding your unique story because although there are many broad brushstrokes with mast cell activation, Each person's triggers and treatment plan has to be customized. You have to order specialized testing. Often that has to be sent to specific labs, requires handling in very specific ways. And it's often not always clear cut. Treatments often are considered off label from insurance that requires additional staff time in trying to get those authorized. And This is really what I have called a time and cognitive energy sink, right? For physicians who are working within that time constraint and trying to see more than 20 patients in a busy clinic day. And the reality of the system, unfortunately, can very easily lead to MCAS concerns being unintentionally, maybe sometimes intentionally, deprioritized because it's not that the doctor doesn't necessarily care It's just that the system is not set up to support this really collaborative, extensive care within that system. Another issue that frequently comes up is some discrepancy and some debate on how MCAS should be diagnosed at all. So I call this trip taste tunnel vision, (laughs) consensus one, and then the missing pieces. So when we do talk about diagnosing mast cell activation in that allergy immunology world, the official guidelines that are put out by the Academy and the College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, and those other governing bodies that are responsible for the continuing education, distributing research and helping fund research and all those sorts of things within our field, those consensus criteria are called consensus one. And this is what's heavily relied on. And there is a much greater emphasis on these criteria on a lab marker called a serum tryptase level. Serum tryptase is a marker that can be measured in the blood 
it typically will be elevated for about four hours after an anaphylactic or a more systemic mast cell reaction. It also can be elevated under normal conditions or baseline conditions in folks who have some hereditary conditions, something called hereditary alpha-tryptosemia, and often in a condition called mastocytosis. Tryptase itself is an enzyme that is released by mast cells, and it's often, but not always, released during a systemic or anaphylactic reaction. So checking this level makes sense. However, this heavy reliance can create what I call this tryptase tunnel vision. So many individuals with significant multi-system symptoms that are suggestive of mast cell relationship will have a normal tryptase level, some even during flares. And so by focusing so intensely on a single marker, are we as a medical field then potentially missing a piece of the puzzle or even an entire group of individuals that are a little different than the group of individuals that do have the elevated tryptase. And unfortunately, what has happened is that many of these larger institutions, in order to be seen in these expert clinics, you have to have an elevated tryptase to be accepted and to be able to get scheduled. And so what worries me is that perhaps we are not studying this group of individuals that are having significant symptoms that are quite suggestive of a mast cell cause that often have improvement with mast cell directed treatments. And are we perhaps then missing that group of people and not studying them as well? I strongly suspect we are. The next piece of the puzzle is the IgE empire versus the non-IgE frontier. So in traditional allergy training for decades, we have really focused our education and what we teach our future allergy immunology doctors on the role of IgE and mast cell reactions. So what the heck does this IgE I keep talking about? IgE antibodies are proteins. They are key players in classic allergies. So if you have seasonal pollen allergies or every time you see a kitty cat, you sneeze or your eyes get all puffy and itchy and red and water. If you have allergic asthma, that is driven by the body IgE antibody proteins. These antibody proteins are housed on the surface of mast cells and a few other places too, but on the, primarily on the surface of mast cells and they act as receptors on those mast cells. So if you were exposed to the cat allergen, or the birch tree pollen, and those antibodies see that pollen, they bind to it, the mast cells will degranulate or they will activate, and we will end up itchy, sneezy, wheezy, what have you. It is easy for us to test for IgE. It can be a blood test. That's what we test for when we do those little allergy scratch tests. But here's the problem. Mast cells are covered with a whole number, dozens, if not hundreds, of other receptors, and they can be activated by all sorts of other triggers. Anything from physical pressure, scratching, infection, temperature change, stress hormones, infections, inflammatory signals from other immune cells, medications, whole host of things, vibration, pretty much you name it, it can be triggered. UV light, these are called non-IgE triggers. We recognize that these are there and we do teach about it, but when it comes to clinical practice, our focus really has stayed on and surrounded the role of IgE. When we get this tunnel vision and focus a little too much on that familiar territory, whether it's tryptase or IgE, I worry that we are inadvertently overlooking this vast and complex frontier of non-IgE mast cell activation that drives so many MCAS symptoms. And I think we have started to turn a corner because the last few years, we've seen this really big push in research and understanding and discussion around the role of our nervous system and its communication with these mast cells. In fact, it was the whole topic of discussion at last year's Academy meeting. But we are still going to have a lot of ground to cover in making up for this predominance in our education and our discussion on IgE. All right, what's next? The next Lyme disease backlash. 
bias and skepticism. So another layer of complexity is the social and cultural context surrounding MCAS. While awareness has definitely grown, right? It's fantastic. MCAS is also facing this backlash in many medical circles. And unfortunately, I've heard disparaging terms used, unfair comparisons to other diagnoses that are still considered quite controversial, like chronic Lyme disease. And skepticism arises partly because MCAS has gained traction in integrative and functional medicine communities. And these approaches can offer really valuable insights. But this focus on MCAS in these circles sometimes makes those who are more traditionally straight trained physicians automatically defensive or biased against the diagnosis itself. This is an inherent bias, and sadly, it does create significant barriers for patients who are genuinely suffering and seeking legitimate medical help. At our core as human beings, we have this tendency towards finding our people and sticking with them. It's called tribalism. And this can be very helpful in some regards, and it can also be harmful in others. And so when we other and when we put things in that or category, this or that, rather than thinking about the and, this is where things become really tricky. So what's my perspective? One, I really want to put an emphasis on the system and not just the doctor. Look, I really get it. As a doctor who is navigating the system and as a patient who has felt dismissed myself, I see both sides of the coin. And blaming individual allergists or doctors isn't helpful. There are so many incredibly caring people who are doing their absolute best within a system that pushes for speed and efficiency over that time, that deep, emotionally invested investigation that complex conditions like mast cell activation require. The 15-minute appointment slot which really in reality is about an eight minute appointment slot. It just is not designed for this kind of detective work. But for you, the patient experiencing these debilitating, confusing, exhausting, multi-system symptoms, this disconnect between your reality and the system's limitations is incredibly frustrating. It's isolating, it's deeply invalidating, and it can get really expensive too. So what is the path forward? How do we push for change? What can we do? Well, I think multiple fronts and you know where you have the energy and time and courage, by all means, I could use some help. We need more research. We desperately need better, more accessible diagnostic markers that don't require us to keep our urine on ice <laughs> to better evaluate for a mast cell activation. We need to have a deeper understanding of its underlying mechanisms. What's going on with this connection between hypermobility, dysautonomia, our nervous system, and these mast cell-related symptoms? We need an increased awareness and education. It needs to be better integrated into medical school curricula and continue education for practicing physicians across all specialties because the reality is, Most of you have played the game of hot potato, bouncing between specialist to specialist, right? Trying to understand and put all these puzzle pieces together. And I think at its core, the biggest thing we need is systemic change. And I really, truly feel that as a physician, it is my duty to advocate for change in healthcare, to put a greater emphasis on promoting practice structures that value thorough history taking and allow physicians the time needed to manage complex chronic diseases effectively and honor the expertise and skill and time that that takes. So how can we empower ourselves as patients? How can we advocate together? The journey to a mast cell activation diagnosis can be an odyssey, it can be long, it can be difficult. Please don't lose hope. Keep seeking knowledgeable professionals who listen. Keep educating yourself. Your experiences are important. By understanding the systemic challenges though, we can advocate more effectively for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for a healthcare system that truly supports all patients. 
especially those with complex, often invisible conditions. If you are looking for more information and support on your journey, be sure to join my free Facebook group, the Becoming Immune Confident Community. I've also created a free immune system disorders pre-appointment workbook. It's packed with helpful questions to ask your doctor tips for making the most out of your appointment, little homework before you go to the doctor. I'm also really excited to share that I've recently launched my own practice where I can work with you directly and help develop a personalized strategy. You'll find the link to my practice website in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe for more videos. But before you go, I want to know what has your experience been like trying to get a mast cell activation diagnosis or even discussing mast cell activation with your allergist or your other doctors? Share your story, share your frustrations and your successes in the comments below so that we and others may learn better how to navigate the system. Let's raise awareness. Let's support each other on this journey. Rising tide raises all ships. Until next time, take care and be well.